Hello and welcome to the Endless Possibilities podcast. Um, I'm Eva and I'm here today with my co-host Garrett. Hi Garrett. Hello Eva, how are you? Hello. I'm very good, how are you? I'm good, I'm on vacation in Spain at the moment. Oh great, yeah. how's the weather? It's very warm, it's very yeah. warm. I, I have an, an air conditioning unit running so I hope it's not making any interference in the video. Oh. No, I, I don't hear it so it should be fine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, perfect. So today's podcast will be all about Garrett. So I'm interviewing Garrett about his spiritual journey and how he became a spiritual teacher and guide for so many people all over the world. So um, Garrett has helped um, hundreds of people all over the world to awaken consciousness, to experience life in a higher level of consciousness, and also to um, activate and awaken their Kundalini. And um, yeah, and you have also created the true spiritual um, awakening community over the last few years. Um, so there are Zoom meditations every week where people meet and meditate together. There are retreats online and offline, um, in-person retreats um, all over Europe. And also um, you have a great YouTube channel with um, a lot of meditations and great content about spiritual awakening and um, awakening consciousness and Kundalini and all of that and also your spiritual journey. Um, yeah, and we met because you were my guide on my spiritual path, basically. So I, I found you and you helped me on my path. And yeah, I'm very grateful that I can do the interview with you today. And we have this podcast because you were such a great help. And yeah, so. Thank you, Eva. And we also became very good friends over the years. We this year. did. We <laughs> definitely did. And, and thank you for making me sound so amazing. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, I really had to say all this, you know, because you are and you've you've just achieved so much over the past few years and helped so many people. So, you know, I really had to say this. Thank you. Um, thank you. Okay. And yeah, so I will just start with the first question. And, you know, how how did you become interested in spirituality? When did it start? How old were you? And who was Garrett back then? So give us just a rough idea. You know, you just roughly can talk about it, please. Okay, so I... Who was Garrett? Okay, Garrett was just a very, very normal individual going about his life. Um, not particularly well uh, in, in my early 20s. Um, unhappy with my profession the work I was doing, uh, realizing that fear was controlling my life and just noticing and, no and having a deep knowing inside me that I didn't fit in. I just didn't fit in no matter where I was. I always felt like I was an outsider. I always felt like I just didn't belong with groups of people, friends. Um, and I eventually stumbled across uh, a book by Louise Hay called You Can Heal Your Life. And it was a really, really simple. I remember I was going on vacation with, with a girlfriend that I had at the time and I was sat on the plane and I was bored and I, I was just, just, you know, looking around for something to do. And she said, here, take this, read it and shut up and stop annoying me. So I started, I started to read the book and I just couldn't believe like what I was reading. I was, you know, there was all these different concepts that had been laid out in the book about how our thoughts um, basically um, control Wait. our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the thoughts um, basically what we think we become and mm. uh, there was also stuff like we choose our parents uh, it, uh any illnesses that manifest in our body are because of belief patterns that we have and i just i was just cool i was just baffled i was just like wow is this true i kept looking at her going what is this and she was okay, there so this yeah, information was totally new to you so you totally you did, new. okay very totally new yeah. so mm -hmm. so nobody in my family none of my friends uh, had any of these um spiritual beliefs they weren't religious so this was just you know as far as i was concerned i was living in an objective reality we were, were born we live a certain life you know 
certain number of years and then we die and that was it and I was convinced that's all that there was so as I started to read this all these new ideas and paradigms started coming in and I was just like wow this is this is just amazing so I I mean I remember asking her going is this true is I mean is this real and she said look just keep reading and see what happens see Mm. see how it changes your life so I straight away I started there was a whole load of exercises in the book affirmations um inner child work healing and I just started putting them all together like literally you know I would sit there saying affirmations over and over and over again self-love forgiveness um and and that's pretty much what got me started yeah okay and and did it work for you like because <sighs> I, I remember reading those book as, books as well right and I also really enjoyed the information and I thought, okay, if that information is in a book, it must be true. Just, I don't understand it, but I did the affirmations and stuff and it didn't really work for me in that, in that kind of way. So how was it for you? I mean, so, okay. So some of the things that straight away stood out to me was my, I, my confidence. I, I, you know, self-love to love myself. And I just started working on this. I started saying the affirmations, uh just having forgiveness to myself a lot of mirror work just sitting in front of a mirror um and and you know saying affirmations writing them down um and i mean within weeks i started to notice the difference i i just old patterns uh reactiveness that was in me just started to to fall away um uh, beliefs limiting beliefs started to fall away limiting beliefs around money about my profession uh th- they started to change yeah mm-hmm. oh wow so you you actually did healing work on yourself back then oh, that's but, a part yeah, of the healing journey yes yeah 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 so yeah. i mean i mean later on i didn't do an awful lot of healing work i did it very much so early on mm. um and then one of the one of the things was that I was just so unhappy I was working in the construction industry and I had a business I was very young and I had a business with uh, another individual and I and a number of employees and I just hated it I absolutely hated it and and then I was like I was I was reading all these concepts in the book about like how I could manifest my own reality using thoughts you know, by by visualizing what I want, I can bring it into my life. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. So part of part of my spiritual awakening started, and this is this is back in 2003, 2004. Um, and all of a sudden, my life started to change. I, you know, more money started coming in. Um, I visualized myself having the 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 perfect business I manifested the perfect business um which just grew and grew and grew um and I could tell that there was something to these books I could tell that by using my intent and by using my mind I could almost influence my my reality to 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 how I wanted it to be but I didn't know how it worked. I had no idea how it worked. Just that if I could visualize it, I could manifest it into, into my reality. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I mean, that's really cool that you had this experience and that this worked, the, the manifestation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really great. And um, when was the time when you started to become interested like more deeply in spirituality, like meditating or, or spiritual practices, something like, like that? So... So while I was doing, so I started reading these books, I went in, I remembered, and at the time there was no, there was no YouTube. Uh, I hardly knew how to use a computer back then. And I remember getting, uh, driving into Dublin city centre and finding, and and there was no Amazon. Um, And I drove in and found this big bookstore and I went into the self-help and I just was like, okay, I think this is the right place. And I just started looking and eventually I found loads of books by Louis. She had absolutely, you know, dozens of books. I started, I bought up maybe four or five of her books. I found other ones that just looked really interesting, took them all home. And I, I, I mean, I was reading two books a week. I would just sit there reading, reading, reading. Um, and while I was there, I also picked up a whole load of um, guided meditations on mm-hmm. CD. 
and I started doing the guided meditations because uh, Louise recommended that you start meditating along with doing all of this work as well. So that was that was part of it. Um, on the very first listen of one of the guided meditations, I entered Satari. I just literally, I dissolved my mind, my thoughts stopped, my body disappeared. I was just pure consciousness floating in the void, just absolutely. And it was like, and it was only very brief. It was only like maybe 30, 40 seconds. But for the first time ever, I was completely free of the mind. I was just there. I was like, and then all of a sudden the mind came in. It was like, I've done it. I'm, I'm free. I'm free of the body. And then the it was, it was, it was done. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but a really, really beautiful experience. Uh, very similar to mine, yes. Also with a guided meditation. Um, yeah, very beautiful. And and then you just like this was the, the the first thing where you thought, okay, now I need to get more of this, probably, right? Or you yeah, to explore but, it more. But again, I had no idea how this was this was working. I was still convinced that we were in an objective reality. Our bodies. Mm -hmm. um, were finite they would you know eventually die and I didn't know I, I had no idea what happened after afterlife so I was very very interested in knowing what happened when 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 I die yeah I, okay because yeah, the whole death process I was I had fear around it mm -hmm. yeah. so when you had that experience of like no mind and no body and everything you you basically didn't really know what happened you just experienced it to be really really nice and uh, beautiful that yeah. yeah so it was just an experience that was happening um when my thoughts quite okay yeah, you know yeah. I had no idea what had happened it was just oh this is really really nice I want to get back to this as often as I can yeah yeah great and, and what did you do then like when what was the first meditation practice so i don't know what was the next thing you you picked up so that you so yeah so i started i started doing trying to trying to meditate i i found it very hard to get back to that place i got on the very and i think i think what happens is like consciousness gives you that really amazing peak experience on your very first go to really get you interested that you come back so after I had it, I found it very difficult to get back there. And I, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm that type of person that I keep at something because I knew I got a taste of it. And I was like, wow, okay, there has to be something to this. So I would sit meditating maybe twice a day for 20 minutes, 25 minutes and struggling, really, really struggling with meditation. You know, the mind coming in all the time. And I would just simply count. I would count from, from one to 10 and then from 10 back down to, you know, to one, uh, just as a way to keep my, my mind quiet. It just, mm -hmm. it was sort of like my mantra. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so it's, you were sitting in, in silence and just silence. trying to get back there. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, great. So, I mean, as you keep saying from the beginning, everything you did, you you did fully. Like when you found the books and did the affirmations and also then trying to meditate, like, you know, you have something you want and then you were just going for it. So yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, you so have that in you, you know, because this is what really helps you to move forward quickly and to get actually what you want more or less, yeah. Yeah, so straight away, I was like, okay, these affirmations are working. This healing is working. I even bought myself some hypnosis CDs and I would lay in bed, listen to the hypnosis, you know, just anything I could do to, to improve my life because it wasn't going well. It was, it was, um, yeah, from, from where I was, it was like, I just had this deep knowing that this isn't it. There has to be more to, to just, you know, this existence of going to the pub and drinking with, with, with friends and coming home and working. So there had to be more. And I was convinced that I was going to find it in these books and these meditations. So I would sit and I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea what was going to come from meditation. I was like, you know, I would sit there and go, OK, something has to happen at some stage while I'm meditating. Maybe it opens up into a new reality. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll get a glimpse of something bigger than me. I had no idea. I had no Internet. Yeah. I had no friends. I had nothing. Yeah, um, it's, it's crazy when you think about it. Today is so different. You just go on YouTube, you know, put in what you're looking for. And there are so many videos about it. And back then, yeah, just books, right? Just so books. The times have changed so much. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and, mm -hmm. I, and I mean, the books didn't give a lot away. It, it, you know, all, all that was recommended was to sit in meditation, you know, twice a day for 20 yeah minutes there was no this is what's going to happen so I was just I intuitively was like okay you know this is this is what I'll do I'll keep doing it because I I feel something inside is going to happen if I stick to it the the the, the affirmations and the visit visualizations they were changing my life my life was getting better I was noticing that I was reacting differently to external um, situations people I wasn't reacting the way I normally would I was becoming calmer and um, I was attracting better people into my life and um, negative people were leaving my life after I I would learn lessons the business that I didn't like just dropped away and I, I started up a new business and my life got better my life the, the, my external life started to feel really nice I bought a house I had a business um, mm. And everything just started going really well. Okay, yeah. So for so for you, everything that already happened in in the beginning phases, basically, because for a lot of people, stuff starts to change and fall away when they're already on the path for a while. Yeah. For you, it was already in the beginning. Yeah. Very very interesting. Yeah. And um, what was the the next more profound uh, shift or experience or uh, share about your first your first okay. more profound experience you had okay yeah. so so Perfect. i was so i could definitely see that by me focusing my attention and and using affirmation and visualizations that i was c c totally changing my life and there was something to this I, I knew it but I had I had no idea of anything else so I knew that that there was something to this there was there was something there was something greater than me and I could influence my reality through thought but I still didn't know anything about afterlife what would happen if I died and that's what really got so so basically after a certain amount of time of manifestation that's what I was that got me interested in this mm. after a certain amount of time of the manifestation I was like I kind of hit a brick wall it was like right I've I've, I've manifested to three shops I said I have a house you know I have a, a nice car but it just sort of like where it, where's it going now it just wasn't going any further so I lost interest in it all for, for, for a number of years, for about maybe three, three years. I just stopped meditating, stopped doing, doing all my practice and just concentrate on my business. Um, and then eventually I, YouTube, YouTube came along. And I, I remember sitting in the shop some days, searching on YouTube and been really, really interested in the whole topic of um, life after death. Um, I came across a guy called Brian Wise, who wrote the book, Many Lives, Many Masters. And that was all about, he was a, he was a hypnotherapist and he would work with clients and he started to regress them back to try and find where pain was manifesting in their life. And I think he was working with the, the, the one of the first stories in the book was how he was working with this person who had severe pain in the, his, in the chest. And they were trying to find where that pain came from and they were regressing him back through memories in this life and he said go back further go back further go back further and then all of a sudden this guy was on the battlefield in France and there was a German soldier shoving a bayonet through his chest and he had he had regressed into a previous life and that was where the pain in this life in his chest was was, was coming from. So yeah. I mean, when I when I came across this story, I was just I was like, wow. I went out, I bought all his books, I started searching all about past life regression, um, and a couple of days later, um, a guy came in and he put flyers. He said, can I put these flyers on the on on the desk in the shop? And he was a hypnotherapist. And I said, hey, I said, do you know who Brian Wise is? And he was like, yeah, yeah. And I said, have you ever heard of past life regression? And he says, yeah. And I said, do you do it? And he says, yeah, yeah. And I said, could you do it on me? And he said, sure, <laughs> sure. So um, so we set up a, a session. I went down to his um, to his practice and I did a three-hour past life regression with him. Oh, wow. That's and long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really, I, I mean, it was really amazing. Um, he, he, you know, he, he brought me into like maybe five past lives through hypnotherapy. Now, mm -hmm. I, I won't get into the details of, of the lives, but um, 
you know, I still, there was still doubt in me. I, I walked away going, okay, very interesting. But did I just make all that up? You know, it was, it was some really fascinating stuff that I got the information, but I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe I just made it up in my head. I, I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure because it felt very dreamlike. It felt, it mm. felt like almost like a interactive daydream. Um, yeah. Not a whole lot of detail, but there was, you know, I was getting information. I could see, you know, scenes and scenarios uh, just un you know, unfolding in front of my eyes. But I still didn't know if it was my own mind, uh, yeah, manifesting them. So I then kept looking on YouTube, kept and I kept searching all about life, life between lives and life uh, previous lives. And then all of a sudden, I came across the whole subject of out of body experiences. Mm. And uh, this little old gentleman called um, Bob Monroe, and I watched his videos. And he was just the nicest gentleman, you know, from he was a Southern American, very, very wealthy businessman who owned um, uh, radio stations and TV. And he started talking all about how one evening he went to bed and he woke up with vibrations and he got really, really scared by, the, by, by these vibrations that were in his body. And he talked. He was maybe having, a, you know, a tumor in his in his brain, and he went and he got checked up. All the all the, the professionals said that there was nothing wrong with him. Um, so then one evening, he he lay there with the vibrations in his body. He's like, okay, the vibrations are here. They're not going to kill me. I'm just going to stay with them. And all of a sudden, he started to float up out of his body. He then realized he was like looking at this this like glass fountain and he was like what what am I looking at here and he's like what is this and then all of a sudden he realized that he had floated up to the ceiling and he was he was bouncing off the chandelier that was over his bed and he okay. said well this is the chandelier and he span around and he looked down and he could see his his wife in the bed and he said next to his wife was was a man and he was like who's this man and then he looked closer and it was him and then all of a sudden panic set in and he started, he realized he thought he was dying. He thought he had left the body and he was dying. So he, he started trying to get back into his body, got back into his body. And um, his whole life changed from that moment. He, he this started happening time and time again. Every couple of evenings, the vibrations would come. But he was terrified, absolutely terrified. This was in the, the 50s and the 60s. Um, Okay, and 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 then you you got interested in doing this for yourself as well. Oh, absolutely! So I I okay. straight away I was like, this is it. This is going to answer all of my questions because uh, I wanted to know what happened when when I died. I I you know I I just wanted to make sure that you know when I die I'm not just you know worm food. I yeah you know, yeah I, I this is I I was convinced that his body was just. When it dies, that's it. So yeah. I was like, if if I can have that experience, I'm going to know that that I live on. So I, I went and I bought all his books on Amazon um, and I started practicing and practicing and practicing. And I mean, I was practicing for about three months and nothing was happening. And I also, while I was looking for, to, uh, for, for Bob, I came across another gentleman called Tom Campbell. And Tom actually was one of the explorers. So Bob Monroe went on to create this lab called the Monroe Institute, where he would study consciousness. And he trained a whole load of explorers how to, how to leave their bodies and, 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 and go, go out and explore these out-of-body experiences and come back with information. And one of the explorers was called Tom Campbell. And Tom Campbell broke away from Bob and he went off and studied consciousness. He was a physicist and he studied consciousness for 35 years. And he came back and he wrote this book called My Big Toe, My, My Big Theory of Everything. And it was basically how, how everything works, how, how consciousness works, how our reality works, uh, what, our, you know, what our place is in, in the larger reality. And... I searched, I went looking for him and I found he had a website and I found he had a Facebook and he had like 14 friends at the time. This is going back maybe 14 years ago. 
And I'd been sitting there every evening trying to project out a body. Nothing was happening. And I reached out to Tom, sent him a, a, a message on Facebook. And I said, hey, Tom, I said, you know, I, I, I've been watching some of your videos. I said, you know, I'm Bob Monroe. And I was like, you, you two guys, like, I believe you. I said, but I said, it's not my experience. I said, I'm reading all about it. And I said, it sounds so amazing. And I said, but I really want to have this experience. I said, how can I do it? I said, can you teach me? Um, because unless I do it for myself, I said, I, I, I'm still going to have doubt. And he was like, well, you know, he wrote back to me next day. I got a message. Oh, and really? Wow. Really, really nice. And he typed away and um, told me, you know, to go on and read the form and, you know, research this section of his book more and meditate a little bit more. And didn't really give me anything, no, no amazing tips or anything. But two nights later, I woke up in bed with vibrations running up and down my body. Mm -hmm. And... And I knew because in all of the books that I've been reading, the prelude to having one of these out of body experiences was vibrations uh, that would 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 start in the body and they would start to, to go from the, the toes all the way up to the head and back down and they go up and down and get faster and faster and faster. And it happened exactly how it would in the book for me. And all of a sudden, these vibrations in me just got so loud, they sounded like jet engines in my ears. And then all of a sudden, two arms literally just grabbed me from under the arms, pulled me out of my body and catapulted me through the roof. And I'm, I'm flying, I'm flying across all the fields. I'm, it's just like the most, and I'm like, I'm, I've done it. I'm, I'm out of body. And I'm just yeah. looking down, I'm flying. And then all of a sudden I, I kind of come to, a, to an end. And I land in this field and I'm like, I'm looking around and I'm looking up at the stars and everything. I look at my hands and I'm like, I did it. And then all of a sudden, what felt like an elastic, big elastic rubber band just snapped me back to my body. And I jumped up out of the bed and I was like, I did it. I did it. Um, and I mean, I couldn't get back to sleep. I was, I had, yeah, of course. Yeah, I couldn't get back to sleep. The whole next day I was walking around going, I don't die. I don't die. <laughs> if my body, if my body dies, I exist beyond the body. Mm. And that yeah. was it. Yeah, very, very amazing. To me, it's just so amazing that you were trying this for three months and nothing happened, you know, because people usually give up very quickly when stuff is not working, but you were trying and trying and, and looking for solutions by finding Tom. So that's really amazing. Um, yeah, and then you didn't die. Great. And then, but you kept on like practicing, right? You, you didn't uh, doing out of body experiences and for a while. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so all of a sudden, so the next day I wrote to Tom, I said, I did it, Tom, it happened. And he was like, well, you know, he said, just, just keep going. Don't, don't get too excited. And he said, see what happens. But again, not giving me too much information, but then all of a sudden what started to happen was these experiences were just, I couldn't turn them off. So it, it was like two or three times a night, I would wake up with the vibrations. And I mean, there'd be like, wind coming through the like when the vibrations would come through the body all of a sudden you're open to that world and it was like wind would come in glass would be breaking there'd be people calling my name um, and I'd be like and, and there would be this sense of like oh what what's out there what's you know there's there, there's other beings and I would I would start to the vibrations would come and all of a sudden the way I would separate from my body what I would imagine I was rolling and I would roll off the side of the bed and separate and then all of a sudden as soon as I'd get away from the body I would just think of a place and either I could like I would just go there or I could walk through walls or I could fly so um yeah so they started happening and I couldn't turn them off sometimes I'd go out of body three or four times a night um then I, they might just disappear for a, a night or two. Then they'd come back. And this went on for about a year or two. Oh, wow. I, yeah, yeah, it was going on That's all the time. long. Oh, I oh mean, I, I, had, I had some amazing experiences. <laughs> what did you do for one or two years in those areas? Um, so, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, if... Do you so want to share just one or two, just one or two experiences maybe that would be interesting for everybody to sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so I had, I, I, I met other beings 
you know, uh, spirits who, who had passed on. I remember one one evening, one night, rolling off the side of the bed and falling through the, the ceiling and landing in my in my sitting room. And I remember I remember being stood at the doorway and on the floor of my sitting room, there was two teenage girls, about 13, 12, 13, uh, in the chamas, sat on the floor with cushions on their laps, like they were talking to one another. And I stood there and then the two of them turned around and noticed me and they screamed. They got scared of me and the two of them ran through the wall. And I remember going, wow, that was so weird. And I remember moving over, there was a mirror over the, over the, the fireplace and I looked at myself in the out of body state at the mirror and I was just made of like water. It was like I was completely transparent. I looked like a ghost. Really? So I, I think that, the, so the girls were obviously spirits. They were, mm -hmm. they, they had died. They were, they were humans and they were still hanging around and they re they could see me in this out of body state and I had scared them. Yeah. Oh, wow. And you could see yourself in the mirror, but I could see myself. Different. Okay, I, I can see myself. I mean, I mean, the 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 ex when you're in that state, it is so real. It's like you, somebody you have a somebody hands you a, a remote control and it's got a high definition button, and you, you click it and everything just becomes so HD. It's like mm -hmm. the flowers. I remember one I'm actually in Spain in my parents' house at the moment, and I remember one evening going, Oh, let's go to my parents' house in Spain. And straight away, I was stood outside and they have these bushes at the front of the house and they have these white and pink flowers on them. And I remember that they were like all sort of like glowing and the, the, there was sort of like this energy connecting all of them. I remember going, wow, everything looks so amazing. And I remember another evening, like in the rain, moving around in the rain and feeling the droplets of the rain passing through my body. They literally like, I could feel them going through and end, exiting the other side of my body. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, th so that, that was going on. I would, I, I would get out of body. I could do whatever I wanted. I could go to places. And then there were certain places I couldn't go to. I would mm -hmm. get this almost like a, mm, when I would try and go to certain places where I wasn't allowed to go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So when sure. you're in this outer body states, um, is it more, is it like a, a movie where there is just, you just see things or do you experience it as well? Like, you know, emotional in, in that kind of way. So how, how is the experience of it? So it feels, so, so you, you can go in the out of body state in a number of ways. You can travel almost as a disembodied consciousness. So I, I, I used to be able to do that as well, where my consciousness would just become aware in different reality frames and mm -hmm. i could mm -hmm. i could almost just observe everything as a as a, 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 a as an observer but then i could also go with a body like an astral body and it would be a complete copy of this it would i could i had hands i could move i could walk through walls and um, and it was really really real it was so real it was more real than this reality okay yeah yeah very interesting. I had two out of body experiences, but just after a jet lag or a yeah. while having a jet lag and I was flying over the area where I lived and it was very beautiful. And I thought, oh, I can fly. It's real, you know, so I have to yeah. tell my boyfriend. That's what I thought. Yeah. So I, I but I, I hardly remember it so long ago, but I think it's so fascinating. Yeah. Really cool. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Yeah, that's, sure. that's, that's so cool. Um, great. And then, um, what's the next more profound experience where you say, okay, um, this is more, you were more open or more interested in spirituality in starting to meditate um, and do spiritual practices. So what's the next, the next phase? Yeah. So I, I continued meditating uh, religiously. I, I, you know, I would sit in meditation every day, uh, twice a day sometimes for for an hour twice a day um and and that stayed with me even though I lost I I, I eventually I lost interest in the out of body thing and it just closed down just I stopped doing it it closed down and that went away but I was still being very much taught in the dream reality so every evening I would I would go into dream 
into dreams and I was being taught almost like in a classroom and one of the, the teachers that I, I was lucky enough to have in this state was Tom was Tom Campbell so I would have these really fascinating conversations with Tom where we'd be sit eating salad you know at a restaurant and I would be it was like as if I was sat in front of the real Tom and he'd be telling me things we'd be talking about different things and this was happening all the time um this is lucid dreaming right I was I was lucid dreaming yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It, and it wasn't really Tom it was mm. it, yeah if I if I had gone to, and said to Tom hey Tom is that you teaching me in these in these classrooms he'd have said no it's the larger conscious the system using the form of Tom to teach me mm. yeah because yeah. I looked up to him so much yeah yeah and this stayed like with you when you woke up from like in the morning this stayed with you yeah um yeah, yeah I would have all these different lessons that would happen and I, I yeah. yeah I think we spoke last time about the lesson where I I picked up the the, the calf that had gotten out of the field oh, yeah. Yeah, I right. put, okay. this was the sort of situations uh, and yeah. one of the, another big one was the whole death process they allowed me to go through the death process they mm -hmm. told me and when I say day it was just an intelligence that would come and it was like okay you're you have a fear of death we're going to tonight we're going to go through that what it feels like to die mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they would say are you ready and I'd say okay and then they'd be like okay let's move and all of a sudden it would be like my consciousness was just kind of phase into a different state and they're like that's it that's it you've moved from from the living state into the death state and then they'd be okay so we're going to go back and then i would feel the shift again and we've done this a number of times and they're like okay is that a big deal i was like no and they'd be like okay done the lesson mm -hmm. the lesson has been learned and it was like the, the the fear of dying was being you know removed by, mm. by by just slowly let me feel what it was like coming back into my body back into the death phase yeah um but that was your goal right so that was basically your goal and, and that's what you got yes yeah okay yeah 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 it was right. to remove the fear so i knew yeah. i knew early on that it was to, the fear i had fear in my system fear was holding me back fear was controlling my life and that i had to remove the fear and a lot of it was being worked on in, the, in these dream states Mm, okay yeah a lot yeah. of lessons okay very interesting and and when you say it said you were meditating every day so it was just sitting by yourself in silence yeah. right yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. yeah. and and when was the time i don't know if there is a lot in between that but when was the time when you started to get interested in in transmissions and and in all of like the shakti paths uh and and that kind of okay so so I didn't, I, di I, I didn't have an interest. So, so it was like, I got to a certain stage with these lessons and then I had an illness mm. and uh, I had this really, really strange illness come out of nowhere and put me in bed for, I don't know, like a year and a half. It had been going on for a long time, but put me in bed for about a year and a half, couldn't work. I had to work remotely. I had to run my business from my, my laptop at home. Um, and couldn't meditate couldn't do any spiritual practice because all my body all the energy was focused on on healing uh, eventually got over this illness and when i did get back to trying to meditate i couldn't it was like i had gone back like 10 years um, you know, if, if what felt like, I, you know, my ego had gotten really, really small, faint uh, from all the spiritual practice I was doing. And after the illness, I had gotten over the illness. It was like as if my ego came back so much stronger. It mm -hmm. didn't want me meditating. It, it was pulling me away from it. I was like, what is wrong? Why is this happening? I can't meditate anymore. Um, yeah, and, and it was really, really frustrating. And I kind of just, just kind of gave up a little bit. I was just like, oh, just we, we'll just see what happens. And I think it was 2016, just randomly, I, I, I had gotten into a little bit of Eckhart Tolle. I was listening to Eckhart's Practicing the Power of Now, and that was really helping me um, because I was still, even though I was having all these amazing experiences, I was still very much an individual here on this planet with all my problems, all my worries about money, um, you know, my business. And it, it just used to really annoy me. So I started 
listening to Eckhart's audio books, practicing the power of now. And I don't know, like about six months later, I, again, not, not a spiritual seeker. I wasn't seeking anything just to have, you know, a more peaceful life. I had a spontaneous awakening in the gym one morning. Oh, yeah. This is a, like one of your most profound experiences on the spiritual path, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I would say the, the, the most. The most, yeah, the yeah. most, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so please, please do share with us because, uh, yeah, it's a very beautiful experience. So. so so for about two weeks before the experience, I kept having this feeling that something larger than myself was trying to communicate with me. I had the feeling that I was being watched. I, I was listening to songs and I felt like the songs were talking to me. I, fe I felt like I was being followed. I'd go into the gym in the morning and I'd be like, if, if that, I don't know if you, you're familiar with the, the movie, The Truman Show. No, um, I'm not. I know it. I know it. Yeah. But I've never watched it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, fe I felt like I was being watched. Okay. And I just had this really, really strange feeling. Every song that came on the radio it was like as if it was somebody trying to get my attention with the lyrics. And I was like, something really strange is going on. And then one morning I went in. And I remember it was such a beautiful morning. It was like 7 a.m. Sun was coming in the window. And I remember just being stood there. And, and for some reason, on this day, I just stopped. And I just thought to myself, wow. I said, the noises that I'm hearing are not outside. I said, they're inside of me. And I said, that's really strange. I said, they're inside me. I'm hearing the noise inside. And then I looked and the sun was coming in through the window. And I said, and that sun is not external to me. I said, that sun is inside of my consciousness. And I said, all of everything that's going on is in me. And then all of a sudden, it was like as if Velcro, two pieces of Velcro were just pulled apart inside my brain. And I heard it going like this. And then all of a sudden, the only thing, the only, the only way that I could describe it was, was God, the universe literally woke up and looked, peered out through my eyes. Now, this is where all of the out of body stuff and the lucid dreaming uh, really helped me because I wouldn't have known because I'd had lucid dreams before. And a lucid dream is basically when you're dreaming and you realize that you're dreaming. And on, all of a sudden there's a there's a, like a, an, an aha moment in the dream and you kind of go, oh, wow, this is a dream state. And you realize that you're actually in bed and you're dreaming into this dream. You're, you're, you, you've, you, you've woke up in the dream. So all of a sudden there was a being that was not in my reality, that was outside of reality, had suddenly woke up in me and started to look out through my eyes. And I knew it was like, oh, oh, I've been dreaming myself into this character. And then all of a sudden, my mind started going, that my intellect started to try and figure out what was happening. I, I, was, I knew that there was something greater than me that had just woke up. It was looking out through my eyes. And at the same time, there was an, an understanding, an intellectual understanding coming into the me. And it was like, oh, I am, I am, something much greater than this character this character this garrett is a character a dream character the whole thing is fictional it's been a dream my entire life has been a dream i am i, I knew what i was i was like I'm, I'm i am this one there's only one i knew i was this only one supreme being so and then all of a sudden i started to look and the noise the music and i was like i'm the music and I was like, I'm the walls, I'm the equipment, I am everything, I am everything. So I, I, I'm here, I'm in this body, I have just woke up, I'm looking out, but I'm also what's manifesting this reality. And then I looked at the people and I'm like, and I'm the people, I am dreaming myself, I've just woke up in this one form, okay? Here I am, I am now fully conscious and lucid in this form, but I'm also, the, the, the consciousness that's in every single individual that I'm looking at, but I'm still asleep. So mm. it, it, I have become lucid in, in Garrett, but I'm still sleep, sleepwalking in all of these individuals in the gym. They're still dreaming themselves into their characters. 
yeah, and, I mean, and that's yeah the so tears amazing. started rolling down my face yeah. I, I remember sitting down on, on the bench I was just sat there in amazement just looking around I think I sat there for maybe 10 minutes just my mouth was open I was just like wow <laughs> and I remember going I'm, I'm done P- I picked up my bag put my bag on walked out and I had the most amazing journey into work that morning and one hour in the car just looking out everything was me the roads trees everything was me and then I got into work and uh, the the it felt like the the aperture of what just happened had been slowly as I was driving into work still felt really amazing but it had closed down hmm. but I was different I was now completely different something had snapped and it never went back to the way it was yeah I mean such a beautiful experience and yeah of course like if you have an opening like that you're you can't be the same right like you just have so much more knowledge and understanding of how what you are um and how how did you know that this was the supreme being and can you just explain um for everybody what when you talk about the supreme being what it is so that we understand so I didn't. I had no idea what oh. the supreme being was. Okay. It, it, it was almost like that the knowledge of what the supreme being was was revealed to me in that moment. Mm, okay. I didn't. I, I just knew that there was one, and that it was dreaming itself into everything, and it was what was manifesting the reality. And I was that. And and there was no name. It was like the God. It was God, the universe, whatever you know. It was just there was a, something one supreme being. Yeah. Um, but I didn't. There was no religious. There was no Hindu context. There was no. I had nothing. I had no. You know, Krishna. None of these names made sense to me at at, the, at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And from today's perspective, looking back, what do you think has opened? Like, was it? the brahman or or was it like really the just the supreme being then how how you understand it today like opening up the one being so yeah just looking back okay so so again the first thing that i did was i started research and i started trying to find what had happened to me and i couldn't find anything i couldn't find anything um so, so looking back now i understand that i had woken up or it had woken up to to what's known as um, God realization. It wasn't self realization. It wasn't the self that awoke. It was God woke up to the reality of itself. God literally became lucid through my form, looked out through my eyes. All that supreme knowledge was was delivered down into my system, um, and then the aperture closed down because my nervous system wasn't able to to, to maintain that state. I was now in a permanent state of what's known as self-realization. The self was completely awake to itself. Fear, I mean, from that experience, fear was wiped out. Now, when I say fear, I'm talking about psychological fear. Fear of the future, worry, anxieties, they were all just completely gone. It was just gone. It was just like I I just had this sense of like a like a tight shoe had been taken off my foot. And it was just like, oh, my God, everything just feels amazing. I don't have to worry about anything. I know what I am. I know I exist beyond the body. I am. I am everything. And that was it. I was just I was just completely changed from that moment on. Now, there was I still even though I was in that state of self-realization, there was still human stuff going on there was still it's still ego there there was still you know what we would say samskaras um yeah that that was still there so so from that moment on is when my spirit my real spiritual work started Mm. from that moment on that's when i became a spiritual seeker okay yeah and and you researched and couldn't find anything so what was the next step um for you because I mean, the, yeah, the YouTube was already there um, at that time. And I guess like you could search stuff on the internet, so not just books. But yeah, what did you do next? Um, to... So I came, so I, I, I started, I came across uh, Robert Adams and he was talking about self-realization and I came across Adi Ashanti and they, they were talking about different stages of enlightenment and I was like that's exactly what's happened to me now they didn't describe what had happened to me in my awakening but the but 
what had happened, where I was afterwards, they were totally describing it. And they were describing states further on that I hadn't yet experienced. So I was like, okay, I'm definitely there. I'm having experience of that next stage, but I wasn't yet experiencing what they were calling unity consciousness. That, that wasn't happening for me. So I knew, I knew from then that I was on a journey and that there were stages and that I had to make my way along them stages, my journey, the, the journey. Okay, so okay, so you you that this was the next goal to to walk along like that path and attain at this level. So this the, yeah, those levels. Yeah, I mean, okay, so I didn't talk to anybody really. I didn't really have any friends who were interested. I had one friend and I, I spoke to him. And that was that was it. I didn't. I was like, what can I say to people? Who's going to believe me? So I, I had the privilege of of running my own business, and I was able to cut my working week down to two days a week, where I could just sit at home, and I just really, really enjoyed sitting on the sofa, looking out the window, um, just I wouldn't even have the TV on. Everything just felt really amazing. I never went back to the gym after that day um it just I was just like yeah just this is great I don't need to do anything there's it, it just everything just felt amazing even there was nothing there was no striving but it was like I was now listening to Adi Ashanti and I was like wow okay there's you know there's there's more to come yeah so when you when you say you you were sitting on the sofa and you felt so amazing I've heard this before so was it um because all the, the low vib or a lot of the low vibrational emotions just fell away and you were in peace, you felt peace, or what, what did you feel? Like, what was um, your experience? So, so the, the, the human seeking energy just ceased. The, mm. the striving for more, striving to, to, to advance myself, to, you know, to keep my business advancing, that just, it all just stopped. It just, mm. I was like, I, yeah, didn't care about going to the gym, didn't, didn't care about staying in shape. I was like, Oh, I don't care about any of that stuff. Um, I'm just happy. I don't care what anyone thinks about me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, had, yeah. I had seen, I had seen that everything was a dream. I was like, yeah. okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, perfect. And um, and then um what was the next the next phase? So you were sitting or you were enjoying that phase for quite a while, I think. Two, two for, years. For two years, yeah. Two two years. Yeah. And then um you was that around the time when you started your meditation group or was this a bit later a little bit later so for about two years i was just sitting around just enjoying this freedom this new state um st start i was still getting little teachings coming in i would sit there and go what's going on and i remember one day an intelligence started to explain that I was in self-realization. It explained it explained ignorance to me. It then ex exp explained what witnessing consciousness was, self-realization. It, it explained God consciousness. And it said that I was in God consciousness. Um, I was fluctuating between self-realization and God consciousness. And then it told me that there was a, a further state that was about to develop. Mm. Um, Can I just so, ask you something? Um, yeah. about God consciousness was this something where you were in like all the time or was this experiences and you dropped out and in of that yeah okay yeah. so it, it was an opening up and a closing down okay yeah and I mean when it would when it would open up it was just amazing it would feel like I was an alien that I had just been dropped dropped down onto the planet and I was looking at everything with new like for the first time so I'd like walk out walk in nature and I'd, I'd be like looking at the trees and how the light would come through the trees and it was like it was just being displayed for me at that moment it was like that I would do the same walk every day and it was like it was like the first time that I'd ever put my feet on the on the ground I was just I, I mean there'd be days that there'd be tears rolling down my face walking around at the beauty of everything yeah and that, that yeah. was going on for like a year, either. yeah, in and out, yeah. in and out. It would open up, it would close down. And most of the time it would open up when I'd go into nature. Mm. Yeah. 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 So I, I, um, I, I want to share a bit about um, 
that experience I had as well in the God consciousness, it was very similar. Um, I had a few of them just over a period of two or three months. And it was also in nature and also on my birthday. And I asked, you know, the Divine Mother on my birthday for a birthday gift. And then I woke up already in the morning. I looked outside and I could already see things look different. And then yeah. um, I went for a hike. And I can also describe it like you, like everything was just so um, like colorful and bright and everything looked so amazing and everything was vibrating like it's like yeah it was just so, so beautiful like yeah I, I really really loved it so yeah yeah Such it's a beautiful state or, or experience to have yes yeah it's it's like if you're trying to explain you're still looking at the same things everybody else is oh, looking yeah, yeah, at it's the same yes but it's like everything just has this it's like an, an added dimension to it yeah. that you just it, never it, seen it, before yeah it looks sparkly everything looks sparkly, sparkly and beautiful yeah. and you feel so joyful and you feel like you're in a cloud basically so yeah, yeah. Uh, that's very very that was it that, yeah, that, yeah. that's exactly what it is yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, exactly. and that's that's consciousness looking out through your eyes and seeing itself in the outside world and then the feedback is bliss when mm. when, when when the self realizes what it what it's witnessing is itself the feedback is bliss yeah yeah yeah, very beautiful. Um, okay, so you were in and out of God consciousness, and then you started to become interested in unity consciousness, or to attain, to experience unity consciousness. So how, uh, how was no, it for you? No, not, not necessarily. I I then, Kundali, the topic of Kundalini started to come. Oh, yeah, that's right. pop up, mm -hmm. pop up. I started to read about it. I had a talk with, where Adi Ashanti talked about it. I was like, wow, okay. And I was like, started to research it. And I discovered that it could be sped up, the, the, the process could be sped up by using spiritual transmissions. So Shaktipat just came up and I was like, OK, I, I need to research Shaktipat. So I re researched Shaktipat and discovered that there was a gentleman called Jan Esman uh, coming to Dublin. Uh, this is back in 2018, I think. Uh, and he was doing a three day Shaktipat intensive. So I was like, OK, I have to go. So I, I told my friend about it. He was like, yeah, let's go. Booked in, went. And uh, the day before, actually, I was I was I was walking and I, all of a sudden a message came in and it said, this is going to be a game changer. OK, so I was like, well, I'm definitely going. Yeah. OK, and then you received Shakti, but for the first time. Yeah. So I, I went to this. It was in Dublin city center. I went um, just there was this guy sat up the front uh there was maybe 25 30 people in the audience uh sat meditating and he would bring them up and sit next to him and he would put his hands on their knees and meditate so i think i was one of the first people to sit next to him and i remember sitting there receiving shakti pat we meditate for 15 minutes and i was like oh this is this is a bit strange you know this this guy has his hand on my leg and uh <laughs> Uh, I was like, okay, but let's let's just do it. So I, I was meditating. I didn't really feel much. I was like, well, I sat back down. I see he asked me how it was. And I was like, you know, out of politeness, I was like, oh, yeah, really nice. Thank you. And sat back down in my seat and uh, didn't feel much on the first day. I mean, I could tell there was something. When I closed my eyes, my meditation was deeper. It was, you know, I, could, I was like, okay, so, you know, I can definitely sense that my meditation is, is deeper but nothing profound on the first day second day second day I got a little bit triggered by the teacher <laughs> and um I actually was going to leave halfway through the second day I was like oh this isn't for me I remember packing my bags and going nah just nothing's nothing's gonna happen I just yeah um, and then I remember going on lunch and having such an amazing time with the other participants on the lunch and going, okay, I'll come back. So I went back and I was delighted that I came back because on day three, everything changed. Day three, I had bliss in my brain. I had Shakti all around my body. I, I was it's like, I couldn't even function. I had, I at one stage on day three, I couldn't even sit in the room. It was that, that intense. I had to, it, it was in an old Georgian building. And I remember going down into the basement and just sitting by myself on the floor, trying to ground myself. I had so much energy in my system. Um, 
And then on the next day, I remember just like getting out of the car, getting electrocuted up by the car. Everything I touch, I was getting shocks. And um, I had so much, like I had all this, this strange sensations in my hands. I had bliss in my face. My jaw was gone. It felt like I had taken some sort of like chemical. Uh, I was I was intoxicated. Um, and I was just for the next three months, I was in bliss 24-7. I was I, I couldn't I couldn't get over it. I didn't yeah. need any more Shakti I, I was like I, whatever I've gotten, I don't need anything else. Yeah. So your Kundalini got activated, right? Would you uh, say it like that? No, I would say my Kundalini was already activated. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, from the out of body experiences ah, with the okay. vibrations running down my body. Okay. Um, I think going to see Jan was like um, pouring gasoline on a fire. So mm -hmm. I, I was already in a state of self realization, uh, in and out of God consciousness. The Shakti pad just, just ignited everything. Yeah. Mm. So and it was the first time you actually received the transmission. Was it? Was it? Yes, it, okay. yes, yes, that I knew about. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. And you right away had such a profound experience. And then oh, you went incredible. to like a number of his intensives, right? You went over and over again. Um okay. Okay, so so about maybe three months later, uh, my friend wanted to go again to see him in, in Sweden. And I was like, no, I said I don't need to go. I, I said I've I've you know I've, I've so much bliss going on. Uh, and uh, what did happen was Mother Mira came to give darshan and a friend of mine told me about Mother Mira and I registered for Mother Mira. I think I, I, we discussed it on the, I don't know if I'll get into the story, will I? We discussed it on the on one of the last. Yeah, well, we, we discussed it. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. Both yeah. So I had this, you can just briefly. Yeah. Just yeah. Briefly. I had this very profound experience with Mother Mira where she, she where I basically received darsh, darshan from her in a dream state. And this was just adding to the bliss. This was like the next day after the dream, I went into work. I couldn't function. I had to lock the door. I had to lay on the floor. I was like looking up at the ceiling and laughing to myself. I, could, I was just mind boggling the bliss. I couldn't function. Couldn't, didn't, couldn't even walk. I had that much going on in my system. Um, so how does it feel when you have so much like shocked in the system or energy that you can't walk? Like is it just overwhelming or you just prefer to lay down before doing anything else right yeah but i mean i mean look yeah. if 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 i needed to if there was an emergency of course i could get up and, and yeah. like yeah a lot of people get scared about this yeah. but it's not the case it was just like i couldn't i couldn't interact with another human so i was like i'm just locking the door of the shop because i cannot talk to another person i lay on the floor and i just laughed i kept saying to myself i'm different I'm different. Something has happened. I am completely different. Um, yeah, yeah. And you want to enjoy this experience, right? It's just totally. something you want to like totally surrender into it, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, yeah. And there was a whole other series of, of, of things. I think Ama came on the scene as well. I received uh, a hug from Ama. It, the same thing. Literally, I, I, I started having. Um, glimpses of unity consciousness after I received the, the hug from Amma. I didn't even know my own name after I received the hug from Amma. I remember sitting, after I got the hug, sitting on the stage next to her, and I remember opening my eyes and looking around, and I was like, a whole lot of Indian people. I was like, what am I doing in India? How did I get to India? I wasn't. It was just that all of her helpers were Indian. I was, I was convinced I, was, I had traveled to India. I, I, I sat there didn't know my own name. I I, I couldn't yeah. find the brain a reference. Is just everything is just empty. Like you, you can't you, you can't find thoughts. Nothing is there, right? It's just yeah. empty, and you just have no idea what's going on. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. there was no reference of who I was. I was like, I don't know who I am. I don't know who I'm with. I was just I was just sat there, just so happy. Um, yeah. So then, then came a point where my bliss started to go down. Um, where it started to disappear. And I was like, oh, maybe it's time to go back and get Shakti Pad off Jan a second time. So I traveled to Copenhagen to see Jan. Um, had a re another really good intensive with Jan on the very last day, the Sunday, I remember saying to Jan, I said, look, Jan, I have to go early. I have to get a flight. 
and he called me up. He said, come, come up. And I sat down and he says, I'll give you shaky pack before you go. And I said, oh, go easy on me because I have to I have to get a flight. So he gave me he gave me shaky pass. And then I, I left to say goodbye to everybody. And when I walked out the door into Copenhagen, and it was around Christmas time, it was maybe um, December, um, I, all the Christmas decorations were up. I walked out and it was like I was in a video game. It was like everything was just bright and sparkling. I was like, oh, how am I going to get to the airport? I had to catch a train. I, and I was just like literally like walking around, walked down some steps, doors opened up. I walked onto this 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 train. I was like, I didn't even know I was on the right train. All of a sudden the doors opened. I walked out. I'm in the airport. That's all I remember. I remember getting and then I remember getting on the plane and getting home. I was fine. Um, yeah. But then shortly after that experience, I had the, the full Kundalini uh, awakening about two or three weeks afterwards. Okay, so um, so I mean, it, it's so great that you have that you had all these profound experiences and everything, you know, like was shown itself to you so clearly and so profound. I mean, that's very beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and um, and the Kundalini awakening. So that was also a very profound experience it went on for quite a while right and was very physical yeah. yeah so one evening I was I was just sat on my bed listening to I was actually listening to classical piano music um why I was listening to classical music I have no idea because I don't listen to classical piano music your um, kundalini likes classical it, it, piano. my kundalini <laughs> liked it um <laughs> and I was just lay on the bed and I started imagining the energy running up and down my spine and then all of a sudden it just started and it was like it became awake and it started moving by itself. And if 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 you have an active kundalini that's in your spine and it starts moving, you know, I mean, it's the most incredible experience. It's like a little ball of electric bliss going up and down the center of the spine. I was running from the from the base of the spine all the way up and it was hitting a blockage in between my shoulder blades. And I had known about the blockage. It had been there for quite some time. And it would hit there and it would feel like it was pushing and pushing. And then it would drop back down and come back up. And then all of a sudden, pop, the, the blockage popped. The, the kundalini went past it. It went up into my neck. Then it got stuck in the neck. And it started going from just where the skull to the to the bottom part of the neck. It got it kind of got stuck in that place. And it kept like a almost like a ping pong ball going back. Ding, 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 ding. It started going like this bouncing and then all of a sudden it just became a complete vibration in my neck I was like oh my god and I mean I was paralyzed from lay on the bed my back was arching I had just this crazy energy going through my system uh, and it was trying to get through a, a, the third blockage there's a knot just at the where the skull is and it couldn't it couldn't get past this blockage so all of a sudden it the way I was experiencing it was that it couldn't get past the blockage at that time, but it didn't want to drop back down. It wanted to complete the journey in this experience. And what it did is instead of going up, it went out and it crawled up my face and the back of my skull. And it went up to the top of my head and drilled down into my brain. And then I had the experience of, of the crown opening. So literally it felt like the top of my skull was pulled like this, and it was like a white light started to expand in all directions. Um, it felt it, it felt like somebody had like pulled, stretched my my brain in all directions, in all directions. Um, and that it like, and while all this was going on, that it was like the most insane orgasmic sensation was just going up the center of the spine, uh, and all this energy was going up into the brain. And I mean, I just sat there. I don't, I don't know. The whole experience lasted about two and a half hours. And then eventually it was just, it got quiet. And I lay there and I was like, okay, let's turn the music off. And I was just able to manage to get out and turn the music off. And I was like, well, I knew, I knew what had happened. Yeah. Okay. So you knew that that means you well, surrendered to it and you had no fear in the system. You said, no, right, there was no so, fear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There was no fear. I, I didn't know if the Kundalini had completed its journey. I knew that I had the most amazing experience. I knew it was Kundalini, but I wasn't sure that that was it. I was, you know, I, I didn't understand the journey, the, the full journey at the time. Yeah, yeah. But you were 
just surrendering to whatever happened and you yes. were basically fine with it okay yeah yes That's totally yeah yeah. Totally, yeah yeah because like all the fear and then anxiety and everything was gone already so yeah really really yeah. cool mm -hmm. well yeah you have such great experiences garrett really cool um okay and then how long after that you discovered that you can also like give shaktipat or a transmission and when like it was around the time when you started your group right the meditation group so a little bit after that i i yeah so a little bit after that i went to see tom campbell and while i was with tom campbell i did five days with tom campbell in a place called lumley castle in newcastle and i had all these questions that i wanted to ask for tom ask tom about my kundalini and shakti pad and transmissions and when i got there all of a sudden my psychic ability started to completely open up and I would just close my eyes. I could ask questions. And one of the first questions that, that, that I wanted to ask Tom was, was my Kundalini complete? Was the journey complete? And all of a sudden I, I, I had, I started to see myself in a vision with these bottles of water. And I was walking around with bottles of water, putting them under my arms as I was collecting them. And I had seven and I was like, I was like, what are the bottles? And then all of a sudden the intelligence said, the bottles are, are representing your chakras. And it was, and I was like, oh, I've got seven of them. And I was like, so the Kundalini has traveled through the seven chakras. And it was like, yes. And I was like, so is it complete? And I said, no. And then all of a sudden it showed me, and I used to be a plumber. Okay. So it, the consciousness used to show me in the most um, easiest way that I'd understand. So all of a sudden it showed me this chrome pipe coming from the back of my head up. I was like, what is that? And it connected to this big sphere that looked like a luxury shower head. You know, when you go into a nice shower, mm -hmm. they have these beautiful shower heads. And it said that the Kundalini still has to get up to this eighth chakra that's above my head. And when the Kundalini reaches the eighth chakra, it will rain down, the, 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 the Shakti will rain down on top of me. So that did, hadn't happened at that stage. Okay, yeah. and, and you were shown that, okay. I was shown that that was mm -hmm. what was to happen, yeah. yeah. And what, and this happened soon after, or how long this, did it take? So this happened uh, a little bit after, a couple of months. I So I had started my group, I had started meditating. I had, I had discovered that my state could be transmitted to other people when I meditate with them. Mm -hmm. uh, what I was doing at that stage, I wasn't sure. I didn't, I didn't want to call it Shakti. I was still very much... Um, I didn't want to delude myself or other people. That was very much part of, you know, I, I wanted to stay very small. I didn't want to, you know, go around claiming that I was, you know, given special transmissions. So it was just a meditation. I would sit with a group of people and the group just started to grow and grow and grow. Um, the ability to give Shakti Pat happened. I was initiated into the, uh, the mantra that I, I speak about a lot, the Mahashadasi mantra. Uh, and uh, I think on the second day of me reciting the Mahashadasi uh, mantra, I had a vision where Krishna appeared in front of me. Um, and he was sat on the floor in the lotus position and he was doing yoga asanas. He was stretching in front of me and he was smiling. He had these big, beautiful, loving eyes. And I was like, oh my God, I'm looking at Krishna. And he's just beautiful smile and then I went oh my god I'm looking at Krishna I, I, and you know all of a sudden uh, the, it kind of like the shock that I was looking at Krishna uh, pulled the, you know he, his, his vision started to fade and then all of a sudden all of this gold sparkles uh, started to rain down around me and it was like this most insane bliss and that was the that was the eight chakra that was the kundalini reaching the eight chakra Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and from okay. that moment on the shakti just started flowing okay and you felt that it was then shakti yes yeah okay yes yes yeah okay and and uh before you said you started with your meditation group so what what made you start a meditation group and it was online right was it the was it online or was there one before oh yeah so i never wanted to do any is I never wanted to be a teacher. I didn't want to have a meditation group. I became involved with an individual who was really, really gifted at um, graphics and gu guided meditations. And he started making guided meditations and he got me involved. And it was a telegram group or a WhatsApp group at, this, at the time. 
and that it built he was doing he was doing these he was doing these meditations and they were really amazing and then he would leave these spaces for me where he'd say okay at this space you do the transmission and I'd start doing it and then all of a sudden he just lost interest in in the whole thing and he said to me I don't want to do it anymore I, I'm going to do something else so I was I was like well, what do I do with this group you know and 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 you're you're making the meditations these amazing med- guided meditations I, I said I can't make them I said what do I do with them so so somebody just reached out and they were like Garrett, why don't you just do them on zoom and we'll all meet and just meditate in silence so th- that's how that before it wasn't on zoom it was live was it live literally there was a, a whatsapp group and there would be a guided meditation dropped into the med- into the, the whatsapp group at a certain, ah, certain time at nine right. o'clock on a tuesday and everyone had meditated at that time and okay. that's how it all started and then all of a sudden the guy who was making the meditations he decided he just said i don't want to do this anymore mm-hmm. I'm not, I, yeah he, he was just he decided he didn't want to do it um and i had maybe I don't know, like 30 or 40 people in the group who wanted to continue meditating with me. So oh, that's how the whole thing started. I had ne- I never wanted to be a teacher. I never wanted to have a group. And I would just start. We just sit and we do a silent meditation. And then the group, a lot of a lot of the people fell away who were who, who were more drawn to the guided meditations. And then new people started coming in to, to the silent meditation. I think like, I mean, the group has grown. I think I don't know, just like sometimes now I see 65 people in the group. It's mm. grown over the, the last number of years. Yeah, so I think that that was uh, about the time when I joined your group, um, when you just started on, on Zoom, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and th- having the silent meditations and, yeah, transmission, but you didn't call it Chakti, but then I remember yeah. it was just the transmission, yeah. yeah. Just the really transmission. Cool. There's like 10, 8, 10 people in the group. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then it started small. growing, growing, um, and then... Um, yeah, and then you got interested because I remember in um, attaining or going into unity consciousness to experience unity consciousness. And then um, you found a transmission that could help you with that. So there's this special light transmission yeah. that helps you with um, raising your level of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. So I, the Shakti got me so far, it, it, it brought the, the Kundalini awakening on. Um, but I, I was still convinced that I wasn't completely there yet. There was something missing. There was still a seeking energy in me. And I discovered this transmission and I booked in, came across the book. I was like, OK, let's let's give this a go. Remember meeting with the guy, 15 minute transmission and no feeling a whole lot from it. It was like, OK very very subtle energy so different from receiving shakti pass uh, it was like okay next couple of days didn't really feel a whole lot so i was like okay look we'll just give it a go okay i think my the, my loc was like 856 when i started um and i was convinced nothing was happening i remember after the third session going I think I'm probably wasting my time doing this. But then all of a sudden, the day after doing my third meditation, my third transmission, I was sat there meditating. And all of a sudden, a vision opened up and there was a coffee mug. And I straight away knew that the coffee mug was the re- it was a representation of the container which was holding my consciousness separate from the collective consciousness. And I'm looking at the coffee mug and then I see prison bars and the coffee mug has been tapped on the prison bars. One tap, tap, and on the third tap, the coffee mug shattered. And then there was an explosion of light in my brain that went out in all directions. It felt like it went to the the four corners of the universe. And I remember just being blinded, completely blinded by the light, just sat there, just couldn't see anything just this white light and then feeling I just felt the light go out in all directions and then implode all the way back in and then everything just went really still like I mean stillness that I've never experienced before and I was like oh that's it that's that was the shift into unity consciousness I knew I didn't I didn't need to ask anyone I didn't need to go can you tell me I didn't need to go back to the guy 
I was like, I'm, I, I, it's happened. I knew it had happened. Yeah. I mean, with those shifts, right? When you have experiences like that, you just know. Oh, there's no mistake. Yeah. Yeah. There's no mistake. The Kundalini, yeah, yeah. the Kundalini rising. Into, I, I get people all the time coming to me and saying, I think my Kundalini went all the way up. I'm like, look, if you, you'll know, there's no thinking, there's no, can you check? You, you'll know when it goes up. The same when, when I had my shift into unity consciousness, I didn't need to ask anyone. It was like, mm. it happened. Um, so yeah, that was, that was that. Yeah. 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 And it was so beautiful back then because I remember then you sharing with us in the meditation group about your experience. And so we saw what happened to you. So, you know, you were like the example walking uh, already that path and we can, you could just follow you. So that was, that was really, really cool. And then you discovered that um, you have the Shakti part on the one hand, and then you have the light transmission you can also give, so you can do both um, awakening the Kundalini helping the body to awaken and then also to awake consciousness right well, yeah well okay so uh, yeah so about two weeks after the unity shift i remember lying in bed and waking up and feeling the very subtle vibrations that i used to have when i used to have the out-of-body experiences and i remember going wow i haven't had them in a long time and i was just lay there with these beautiful vibrations running up and down my body and I had my eyes open looking around the room and then I just closed my eyes. And as I closed my eyes, a new reality opened up and there was a goddess stood above me with multiple arms, with, you know, all these different weapons and gifts in different hands, flowers. And she was like, had a, a huge headdress with dripping with diamonds. And I looked up and I was like, oh, wow. And she said nothing. Absolutely. She just stood there over me. And then as soon as I came out of it, I knew I was like, I can awaken people's consciousness. I can I can do that same transmission for people that I had just received. I, that was what was given to me. It was like a gift. And I was I knew. And that's when I started yeah, doing it for other people. Yeah, that's when you started offering it. In yeah. The group. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's also very interesting that these Indian deities came up for you, right? Because it's not something you were really into. So they nope. just showed up, yeah. Yeah, all, all of them. I, I, not all of them, because there's thousands of them. But I mean, a lot of the main ones. Um, so Durga, the goddess Durga. I, I that was the goddess Durga that appeared over my my bed. Um, I had a, a vision of Kali, Krishna, um, Shiva appeared a number of times to me, and the goddess Lal Lalita. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Um, yeah, and then you started uh, to offer this for people in your group and quite successful. So a lot of people came, you know, wanting this transmission and you helped a lot of people to go into unity consciousness. Um, and then you also, like, do you want to share a little bit about you becoming a guide? Because before it was more your journey um, and unfolding and and now you were able to share this with others and yeah maybe you want to talk a little bit about this okay so uh, again i had never i had a very successful business i i had a number of retail stores and i had a, had a great e-commerce business and i worked really really hard on that and i was convinced that that was my gift in life was was you know doing what i was doing i was i was very good at it um but I had a vision. I remember sitting on the sofa one Saturday evening. I remember just sat there and closing my eyes and then having this download of information. And one of the one of the, the, the downloads was that, uh, and this was before the Kundalini. This was going back just, this was a little bit after the, um, the, the awakening in the gym. And I was shown that there was pools along my spine. They were shown like little water pools. And the intelligence said to me, these pools are not connecting because you're eating meat uh, and, and that the animal products that you're consuming are causing blockages for this energy to, to, to run on. So it told me that I needed to stop consuming meat to help these energies flow. And then it said to me that my real work, the work that I was doing wasn't my true work. And I was like, well, OK, well, what is my true work? And it said that my true work was working with the energy in the spine. I was like. Okay. And it, it, it had pretty much 
laid out my life. I mean, it was like, you know, this is what's going to happen. But I didn't know, I didn't know what, what Shaktipat was. I didn't know really what Kundalini was at the time. Um, and the next day I became, I stopped eating meat. Um, so th these were all little things that had probably contributed to, to me having the Kundalini awakening, you know, the, obviously it was the, the Shaktipat, that we, but there were certain things that I had to do. Um, and then all of a sudden my business started to fall apart during this spiritual awakening, you know, everything that was going on, the shop started to close. Um, you know, my, my, my brother and my father worked for me. They lost their jobs. The whole thing crumbled. Um, but I kind of watched it crumble and I was like, yeah, I don't care. I just don't care. And I knew that something was opening up. I knew that I was going to step into a new role. And as soon as my business, literally like two weeks after my business closed, people just started coming to me, asking me, would, would they, could I do that transmission for them? Could I awaken consciousness in one-to-ones? So I, that's how I started. I, I put a website together. I put up, the, the, I offered that I could, you know, do personal one-to-one -one sessions with people. And over the next six months, that's what I started doing full time. Yeah. 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 Very amazing, really. Um, and okay. And then you started to offer also online events, right? Because the group grew. So you were yeah. on you you were posting on YouTube, like the meditations, and also you were sharing about your experience, which was so interesting. Um, and thank you for doing that because always when you had experience, you were sharing it afterwards. Um, and the group was growing, um, more people were coming in, and then you also had the um, yeah the, the weekend retreats. So that was that was really good for everybody to to sit in those energies for longer, right? Um, yeah, yeah, it was really good for me as well. It, it it almost felt like the more that I did, the more beneficial it was for me as a vehicle for these energies. So mm -hmm. the you know by me sitting with a group of people online. For two days over the weekend it was enhancing my ability to hold more of these energies the the, the vessel was expanding each at uh, each time and it, it just it, it helped me it helped me it, it refined my skills yeah 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 okay then you did this for a while just online because there wasn't any in person yeah there was no possibilities in yes yeah. no possibilities um and then you also started doing in-person retreats right yes yeah, yeah. And Shaktipat retreats. Shaktipat retreats, yeah, yeah. At first, and then also, so, and then maybe we, we should talk about this first, that the super mentor force came in for you as well. Is there something um, you want to share before that came in as well? Um, or should we just continue with the super mentor force? Because that would be interesting. Uh, okay, I get to that. So, so just... Uh... There is something. So all the yeah. time, I never wanted to do this. I never wanted to be a teacher. I never wanted to do retreats. And I remember Jan Esman was was over doing a retreat and he became sick uh, on the last day of the retreat. And I remember getting a phone call and uh, the, the, the organizer panicking, going, Jan isn't well, he can't make it in. There's, 30, there's 35 people. Uh, some of them have come from America you're going to have to do it. And I, I really didn't want to do it. I so didn't want to do it and been pushed into it and going in. And uh, yeah, basically she, she asked me, could I, could I do it? And people were coming up. And even though I didn't want to do it, it showed me that I could do it. I was like, okay, giving people Shaktipa. I was looking around, people were shaking either side of me. And I was like, okay, wow, something has happened. So th this was the universe pushing me into this role, even though I, I, I'm an introvert. I don't want to do, you know, live events or to give talks in front of audience, but consciousness just pushed me into it. Yeah, so so you, you would say if this is something you're supposed to do, you will be shown or pushed into that direction. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you, you're... you're your skills won't be what you think they are, or they won't be my set of skills. It will develop for you in the way that's best for you. Exactly mm. what happened to you, Eva. It's like mm. yours just yeah, yeah. blossomed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, different set of skills, yes. Um, okay, then you did the, the retreats. Oh, no, and first, the, uh, 
Yeah. First, yeah, you started to do the just the Shakti Path retreats, and then also the Super Mentor Force started to come in. So, do you want to share about that uh, experience because it was also profound? Yes. So I came across, and this is this was before the Unity shift. I came across a teacher called Satri. Uh, he's an American teacher, and I went to. I, I, and I mean, this is even going further back than the Mother Mira and and Amma. I remember coming across Satri's interview on Backa. And after watching his interview that night, I woke up in another lucid dream and I felt like I was a servant stood in, in, the, in the hallway, the doorway of a, of a stately home. And I was waiting patiently on the master to return. This is, this is just what it felt. I, didn't, I was just like, wow, this is weird. And all of a sudden the doors opened and Satri walked in and he walked over to me and he put his two thumbs on my forehead and, and pulled me in and the two of us just exploded into, into this gold white light. And I remember the next day going, wow, I really, I really need to go see this guy. Um, so I think it was like two years later, he came to Ireland and I went and I did a four day retreat with him. Um, a silent retreat, wasn't able to talk. I went with a friend. There was three two hour sittings every day and it was very different. There was no Shakti. It felt just like a deep meditation. Um, and when I left the retreat, an energy that felt very different to what I was used to started to come in through the top of my head and pull me into these very, very deep and profound states of Samadhi. And I mean, I was going into Samadhi three times a day for 90 minutes at each time. Uh, and this went on for maybe three or four months. And eventually, after the three or four months, I had the experience of the Brahman, where I was completely like my my self was annihilated. I was completely sucked into the void. All my experience, my consciousness just evaporated. Terrifying. Um, and then the following day, I had the experience where I merged with what I felt was that supreme being that looked out through my eyes. I merged with the impersonal version, the, the, the consciousness version. Um, I was still, I'm still very much awake and aware, unlike the, the previous night when I went into the Brahman. This time I was aware in this vast ocean of cyan blue intelligence it was pure potential pure love um, pure possibility and I was like this is the most and I was it it was like I was there having the experience mm. uh, but I was also it I had merged with it and it was like it was like the per the, the, uh, the, it was like the person the Garrett back in reality who was having spiritual experiences like self-realization and God consciousness, that was all laughable when I was merged with this consciousness because this consciousness was just incredible. I never experienced the love and bliss um, like it. So that was the, that was the supreme being, yeah. Krishna, yeah. Krishna consciousness. Yeah. So and yeah. was this in a meditation? That so was in a meditation. In a meditation, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe okay. 90 minutes, an hour. I just, oh, wow. I hung out in that. Never, never wanted to come back. I was like, yeah. this is just the best thing ever. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Wow, beautiful. Okay, so again, a very profound experience that changed a lot. Yeah. 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 So, and um, just for clarification, so you went into the Brahman before, then you had that experience. And how did the Brahman, Brahman change after that experience? Did it change at all or, or not? So I didn't know that that was Brahman. So, okay. so I ha I'd had the experience of the Brahman mm -hmm. and had no intellectual understanding of what Brahman consciousness was. Mm. So then I had the experience of unity consciousness. So, so my, my shift into Brahman consciousness came before unity. So, okay. yeah. So it wasn't until after unity consciousness, I, would then, I then had the experience of losing the I thought. And then a little bit later, discovering that there was a state called Brahman and reading about it and researching it. And then me having an intellectual understanding, oh, that happened to me a year and a half ago. That's what mm -hmm. that was. And as soon as I had the, the understanding and a context, you know, like a framework of what had happened, then Brahman consciousness unfolded fully for me.
I'd had the experience, but I didn't have the understanding. Okay, so the experience was also in a meditation when you got yes. sucked in. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, for clarification. Yeah. Okay. So it was in a meditation and then you got sucked in. I had a I had a similar, I had the same experience in, in Unity. Um, but I, I didn't allow myself to get sucked in. I I was so scared. <laughs> then I yeah. So you can you can stop it. It's possible in a way, but I I, I did, you didn't, yeah. That was uh, yeah, so I, I speak to a lot of people who get very close and the, mm. the fear because it is terrifying, mm. terrifying. Just, it's just it's like you're on the edge of, of the abyss. And it's like if, you know, if I go into this, I'm never coming back. It feels like you're going to be obliterated. Like uh, somebody described it to me has been like erased. You're going to be like erased from from. Yeah. Yeah, to me, it felt like I'm going to be pulled out of my body and die. That's how yeah. it felt. So that's, yeah. yeah. And not okay. just die. Gone, yeah. You're like, gone. gone. You've gone. been erased. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes exactly. Um, yeah, okay. So then you were, okay, yeah, that was before Unity. Then you had the Unity shift. And then do you, do you just want to share the time frame? Like how long were you in Unity? How long did you have that experience? So unity only lasted like really, really short for me, like maybe two weeks. And then I shifted into Sahaja Samadhi, um, mm. literally just woke up and I was in permanent uh, Samadhi. It was like mm. the, the, the need to meditate again just vanished. I was meditation. I, mm. There was no trying to get to a state of meditation. The I thought had dissolved my sense my sense of self had dissolved um, and that just... So it all just dissolved by itself, dissolved. naturally. Okay. Naturally, yeah, it just dissolved. Mm -hmm. It dissolved. It, di it didn't go in the unity shift. I, I still, there was still an I-ness uh, mm -hmm. in the unity because it was like, oh, I am one with everything. Um, but, but two weeks after the unity shift, Sahaja Samadhi uh, uh, just evolved by itself spontaneously yeah. and then I was shown the experience a little bit later how how the connection between the I thought and the intellect the the channel had been severed and the I thought couldn't jump into the intellect anymore okay and that's also how you learned how to do it now for people yes. right to yes. to erase or yeah erase the I thought basically yeah, yeah. Well, he well help it's not it's yeah. not yeah, as yeah. easy yeah. as just yeah, yeah, yeah of yeah, course yeah. it's not like just it's I can't just say yeah, because people <laughs> People have the, the the knack of going back in and re reinstalling the I thought oh, very yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is true. Um, but you can help. You can. I help. can help. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Um, okay. Then let's move forward into the the Brahman. So, do you just want to share a little bit about um, how it unfolded? So maybe how the, sh the the shift into being the Brahman, how this happened for you? Yeah. So. I, I had had the experience about a year and a half beforehand, and then the intellectual understanding started to unfold. I was like, oh, that's what happened. And all of a sudden, it felt like my consciousness, my awareness was now partitioned here. There was, there was something here in this reality, and it felt like my awareness was now also merged with the nothingness that's outside of reality. And I had this really, really strange sensation that when I would interact with somebody, so I would talk to them, they would be there. And then as soon as I would turn away, they would crumble. And the, the way it felt was that everything was just being projected onto this canvas, okay? And at the back of the canvas was just nothingness pure void and I was that void so it felt that in behind what I was was Brahman was absolute no self void and that void was basically the substratum on which all consciousness was being projected mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah um so I had the same experience um how how was it with the human love for you because for me it was like i had to gone. give my human love so it was like with that shift it was gone with that shift or like 
how everything went um, was it okay yeah. yeah yeah all the love went all, yeah. my shakti went I, I noticed that my mm -hmm. shakti disappeared my, my my transmission changed an awful lot during that time the love disappeared and um, uh, the warmness the humanness disappeared yeah. it mm -hmm. really did I just I would be like oh I, you know my parents I don't think about my parents I would drop my kids to school in the morning while I was with them I was very loving I was taking care of them they, you know I'd say okay run into school and then I'd turn away and my kids would just disappear I didn't mm -hmm. think about them they didn't exist it was I couldn't find them there was no part of me where I could go oh I can think of my kids and worry about them it just it just wasn't there yeah, it's so interesting. The emotional connection to things is just yeah. gone. So you can maybe think, maybe even like think about the even it's children. even saying that's yeah. difficult. Yeah. yeah, even that is difficult, but you could. But yeah. when when you can, it's like it's empty. Like it's there's no no emotional attachment there. Yeah. So it's completely. It's like, yeah. And can I just say that this this is this is this is where the the, the problem with interacting with regular people who haven't had this experience they expect you to have that connection that that mm. you know where you worry about people or you think about them and when you have that experience of brahman you you just don't have that it's just like it's like nothing exists people just collapse when you're not you're not you know you don't go home and go, oh, I wonder how that person is. What how's her life getting on? Mm, it just doesn't happen anymore. It's just like collapses. Yeah. Everything collapses. Exactly. And everything just gets so simple, so simple. simplified. So everything yeah. is so simple and all like this, the 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 the, the stuff are around everything that was there before, like the thoughts, the emotions, and everything um is is just gone. And then things are just so simple and there's not much left. Yeah. yeah 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 i mean when they're there in front of you you can be mm. caring and loving mm. and inter warm but then when they leave it's just like oh they leave and 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 what i noticed was like oh i i don't need anyone i don't i don't oh okay so so people people aren't like you know like i don't get to hang out with people this weekend don't care it's just it's mm. just like where, wherever i am i'm happy it's like i don't need people i don't need activities to keep me entertained i don't it's just they don't exist when i'm not there when when when, when i'm not with them they just collapse yeah yeah and also the desires fall away right you don't have like uh, as a normal human you would sit somewhere and then have like desires for something else and think about something else right this totally falls away so you don't have any desires you're just where you're at and that's it right so the mind reaching out to the external world gets severed and mm. and it wanting nice things or having preferences you know like a, a piece of gold versus a piece of wood it's like the gold it it does it means nothing more no. to me than a piece of wood and it's like that with people i don't have preferences with people i, I mean sure there's certain people that you gravitate because you make your personalities but like even like I'm on vacation at the moment and it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's great, but it's no different from, from when I'm at home. Nothing has preference. Nothing is better. There's nobody is. Yeah. Even, even though the weather is a lot nicer in Spain. <laughs> too, it's yeah. too hot at the moment. <laughs> yeah. I, I miss the rain in Ireland. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. And so the next question would be, how did the, the shift into Brahman um, affect your um, work with people or yeah, being the teacher? Did, did it affect at all? So maybe that's the question. Um, did it? And if yes, how? I mean, it probably did to, to some extent because I, I, I felt that that humanness disappeared. So my ability to relate to be relatable, for people to be able to relate to me, probably got a little bit uh, affected by that shift. Um, but I was very honest about it. I mean, I would sit there with 40 people and a lot of people were really interested in what happened in the state of the Brahman. And I would just tell them the truth. I would explain, you know, how it was. I think there was one time that it, it was just so dominant in my, in my system that I, it felt I had fallen down a well. I, I always talk about it, like being trapped down a well. And if I look up, that little light is my world and people are up there and I'm down in the darkness. 
And I remember just like, ha like having tears just like in my eyes while I was talking to people about this and, and thinking that I had just destroyed everything. I destroyed the, the, the Garrett, Garrett just, was just completely obliterated. I had, I'd gone so far that I had obliterated Garrett. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember um, you had like a, a few days, there was a few days when you really had this experience that, I mean, nothing is left anyways, but even less than nothing was left. Or yeah. I, I don't remember, but like something like that, it was very, yeah, you were really sad about it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but um, was it more that you just integrated this or did something come back? I, yeah. So I... I I, I don't think I think it's very difficult to integrate this. It's like a, a, it's not that it's not that it integrates. It's that you, you're just there. You're just you feel like you're floating off in outer space. Okay, mm -hmm. you've the, the the door of the, the spaceship opened. You're in the the space costume and you're just floating away and you can't get back to your your ship uh that's how it felt it and i mean sometimes i can still feel like that it means like it never goes away you become that brahman and part of you is 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 that always mm. but what happened was then there was it felt like a re-emergence back into creation and as i was coming back into creation there was something I call the pure divinity there was like I was I was coming back in and now all of a sudden there was this light there was this liquid crystalline silvery light coming down through the top of my head filling me over and over every day every hour and this is what I call pure divinity um, and and at the and I mean this was going on in my system and I talk about it. I have a video where I, I call it um, uh, God realization. I think there's three parts to it uh, where I knew I just knew something was happening. I seen I've sat in 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 a, I have a caravan. I was sat at the caravan one evening. And I seen in the clouds a picture of Vishnu. And then all of a sudden my body started getting really strange. And I was like, oh, something doesn't feel right here. And I was like, I, I knew something really big was happening. And I had the kids with me. And I think I was, it held off because the next day then it started when I was back in, in the, I, I sat on the sofa and all of a sudden I seen myself having what looked like a convulsion. So I was going into convulsions. I was having like, a, 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 you know, like creas and shaking. And I said, oh, I better, I better get up to my bed. So I got up onto my bed. As soon as I got onto the bed, my body just started shaking and uh, it was just like uncontrollable I couldn't control it and I had this energy coming in through the top of my head and I it went on the entire night couldn't stop it couldn't control it um I just stayed in bed the next day I closed my eyes I had I was just like connected to everything I was just all of these visions I could I had just incredible bliss amazing yeah and what what do you think happened then? So the pure divinity was just filling up the system, the, the divine yeah. divine energy. The, okay. the, the divine forces were, yeah. were flowing into my my. I I had basically gone out, uh, come one with the Brahman and re-entered, and I came back in with gifts. Yeah. So so you would also call it para Brahman, right? The pure para divinity. Brahman. Is that the same? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and that's that's when the supramental force came into your. When you started to to give it right, when you were uh, able to, it's, it started coming a little bit before yeah. that. But yeah, yeah. the the real flow. Yeah, of that's what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and then and this is also something you're sharing now with your group and with with people. It's yeah, the yeah, mental yeah. force. Yeah, super mental force. Yeah, it comes in. It, 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 people will meditate in the group, and they'll be introduced to that energy, and that energy will just start to come into their systems at random time. They don't even have to be in meditation with me. It just starts coming, pouring into people once they get introduced. Pulling yeah. them into meditation. So, yeah. so everything you basically did or experienced on your path um, unfolded for you to give as well. So the, the, the Shakti path, the, the light transmission and, and the supramental force. And then um, the mother force as well. Uh, well, just just to go back, so so just before the mother force, um, 
the I was shown a series of past lives ju just as all this pure divinity was was going on and in my last three lives I had reached a certain level of consciousness where I was awake in in all, at least two of them the the the, ter the the third first one I'm not so sure I had all this incredible love I wrote about it in my book but in my most previous life I was a devotee of Sri Aurobindo and the mother and I lived in the ashram and in what well, as I was being shown this life they told me that I was leaving India I was actually a Dutch um monk and I, I had found myself in in Sri Aurobindo's ashram and they told me that I was leaving and that I was going to go, come to the west in my next life to bring in the supermental force yeah yeah yeah, I'm just smiling because I remember at one retreat, we were looking at photos of people of Sri Aurobindo's and Madras yes, Ashram, yes, and we yes. were looking if one of them was you. We yeah. couldn't find you, though, but we we found out that you were Dutch, not French, yes. so we found yeah. out that. Yeah, yeah, so really cool. Yeah, okay, and and so it was like, it was your destiny, basically, to, to bring this force um, yes. to, to the West and to help us people here in the West. <laughs> on our spiritual journey yeah 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 really yeah cool. so the, the mother force then um so i spoke about the supreme being okay and the supreme being basically being the one consciousness that's in all of us okay so the the, the mother force i had an experience where the divine mother came into my system and I had the realization of what she was. I became her. She came down, she entered every cell of my system. And again, it's not that you're sitting there having a vision of what the divine mother is, or she's external to you. It's that you actually become her. Yeah, and she starts to experience herself through your physical form. And it was like, I could feel what she was and how she was able to manifest all of creation, all of the realities, all of the galaxies and universes. And each one, as it was being birthed into creation, it was like an explosion of bliss in the cells of my body. And they were just going off and all these beautiful explosions. And I mean, it was the most incredible thing I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. And she basically the supreme being splits himself he you know he's the he's like the potential he's consciousness and she's the she's the one who's manifesting everything that he gets to experience so she's the force she's the real like what i would say like the she's the, like the dynamite she's like the destructive force the creative force she's love she's bliss and the supreme being is more the enjoyer of what she has to offer Mm -hmm. So I got to experience the Supreme Being, merging with the Supreme Being, and then I got to experience the Divine Mother. I got to, to I, I got to experience, or she got to experience herself through my physical form. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you feel that you are her in your form. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, and, and this was also a very long and profound experience, right? It went on for a few hours. Yes. For quite a while, yeah. Yeah, and yes. then you you brought back, or you were able to to, or your force changed. Let's say it like that: the force, the the transmission you gave started to change, um, because of that experience, right? Yeah. So the next day or the next few days, I I was different. It was like she had left. I had had this profound experience with the divine mother. Um, I had seen that she was so incredibly powerful, like beyond anything I've you know you could imagine. And when it closed down, she had left something in my heart. My heart was different. I could feel her presence in my heart. And then my transmission started to change. It was like all of these transmissions, the Shakti, the super mental force, the light, they all started to merge into one really amazing transmission. And I, I just gave it the name, the mother force, because I could feel her behind the, 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 the transmission. She yeah, was in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very beautiful. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so that was like, that was the last more profound experience, right? Yeah, so more yeah. to come in the future, but this one was the, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, yeah, so I think, 
um, you, you shared a lot now about your spiritual journey. Um, is there something you want to add? Because I think we should come to an end. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, no, I don't think I, I mean, okay, again, we, I spoke about an awful lot in this. And if you, if you want to like really get into it, you, they can, people can find my book, uh, Waking Up From The Dream. It's on yeah. all the Amazon. Um, so it's here. Wait, oh, it's, yeah, it's the, the, it's the wrong way, but still. No, no, it's fine. I, I can see it perfectly. Yeah, yeah. So that's the book. Yeah, I mean, of course, in, in like a podcast, you can only share so much, right? I mean, a lot is not shared, of course, but you also have great YouTube videos where you share a lot. Although also the experiences you had right after you had the experiences and also just content about like the different states of consciousness we were talking about, also the, the Kundalini, the Shaktipat, um, light transmission, supermental force and all of that. So it's all available for everybody who's interested. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I have two two amazing videos um, called The Mother Force Explained on my oh, YouTube yeah. channel. This yeah, And they well, talk yeah. all about what happened with the Divine Mother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, great. So I think, sadly, but we, we should end this. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're basically <laughs> telling me to shut up now. Even. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, that was such a great interview. And you, you know, you were sharing also things I didn't know. And I found it so interesting. And thank you so much, Garrett. It was great. Thank you so much, Eva. Thank you. And you did an amazing interview, I have to say. Really great. Great, great. I'm glad we enjoyed it. Thank you so yeah. much. And, and thank you for everybody who was listening to all of this. Um, thank you so much for, yeah, for, for uh, listening to the podcast, for listening to this interview. And um, do you want to share a little bit about um, where people can find it? So you have your sure. website. Sure. So uh, the website, my website is truespiritualawakening.eu. Um, my book is Waking Up From The Dream. Uh, that's on all the Amazon platforms. Uh, my my Instagram is the Mother Force, and then my YouTube channel, True Spiritual Awakening. All my videos are up there, and my meditations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you have your two free uh, silent meditation on YouTube on Tuesday and and Friday at nine p.m. Yeah, nine p.m. UK time. UK yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's amazing. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank Bye. you so much.